Who is the person you've always wanted to have a conversation with that you haven't had yet or you haven't met yet? Man, let me uh, let me come back to that. That's a good one. I don't get stumped too much. I'll tell you who I'm afraid of for whatever reason, Jay-Z. I'm even better around Beyonce. I think you gotta have a dream. The school of greatness. Really? <laughs> yeah. Please welcome Lewis Howes. Welcome back everyone to the School of Greatness podcast. Very excited about our guest, Terrence J in the house. My man. My man. Good to see you, brother. Good to be here. This is incredible. Your Thanks, build out man. is incredible. Thanks, man. I'm having fun. I'm trying to be trying to be like you. You are doing everything. You're doing producing, acting, hosting. Uh, you're now the head of talent and all these different things that you're doing right now. And you've you've been kind of in mainstream culture for the last, I guess, 15, 20 years now. Wow. It seems like you know everyone. Yeah. It's like you know Obama, or at least you've been in rooms with Obama and yeah. Michelle and Barack. You've you know Beyonce and Jay Z yeah. and, all, and Kevin Hart, your buddy, your buddies with. You just know everyone. Yeah, it's that, amazing. that's why I was so excited to get the invite. I wanted to get to know you. <laughs> I, I, know. I see you always pop up on my feed. Really, you pop up on my feed a lot. You must have a deal with Instagram because you always pop up, and I'm always you know catching just the quote. Yeah, uh, off, of, off of your show that just gets me through the day. For sure. So I'm, I'm excited to sit down and talk with you, man. Something that's interesting, I feel like we're, we have a lot of similarities in that you are an, a master networker in building relationships. I feel like I've done a good job in yeah. my industry of building relationships, coming from nothing, just a kid from Ohio that wasn't in this industry. Yes, you have. And just kind of like adding value one person at a time and building something from nothing. And that's something that you've done as well. You've just... Okay, let me go yeah. put myself out there and get this one gig and then build a relationship and get another gig. How do you feel like you've been able to master the art of relationships over the years with coming from, you know, really not much? You know, Will Smith uh, has this video. It's, it's it's super famous online and he talks about... So for treadmill? Uh, yes, the treadmill. <laughs> so good, it's man. It's so good. And, you know, I mean, how old is that video? Wow. 10, 15 at least, years? At least. And, you know, he talks about building that wall and every day just laying down that brick. And what I realize is that every time I walk into a room and I have a conversation with a person... You know, life is not linear. It might not be the next day I'm going to get a, a phone call that that uh -huh. was something that led to my next level of success. But it can be two, three years down the line. It can be two, three months. And the dots will just connect. Mm -hmm. Or that person will speak about you to this person that may bring you in for this. And so I just try to live my life knowing that every time I walk out of my door, every single person is in my life for a reason and nothing is to be taken for granted and and i, I just know that you know the 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 achievements that i want to have are going to come from the people that i associate with and so mm -hmm. uh damon john told me uh a, a year ago he was like your most important asset is your rolodex mm -hmm. and so i just try to utilize that in the best way i can how do you i 100 percent agree with that and i think my relationships have, have been what got me where i'm at how do you stay on top of connecting with people when you've got thousands in your Rolodex and probably hundreds that you're close to on a certain level and then dozens that you're very close with at different stages of your life and season of your life. How do you constantly stay in touch over text and email and phone oh, and meeting I'm, a person? I am horrible at it. Really? <laughs> horrible at it. You know, our primary function of communication is text messaging, and there's no organization of text, yes. right? So on emails, I can put things into buckets and know, you know, all of my film stuff goes here, television things go here, all of my, you know, uh, production stuff goes here, and can organize myself based on it. But with text messages, if you get behind in two days, you can get really, yeah. you know, lost. So I try you know, at least once a month to like go through all of my text. Um, and then another thing that helps me get through is I'm always doing something, right? And Instagram and social media has really helped me stay on top of my connections. So even if you hit me to check on me and I forgot about it, mm -hmm. if I have another event coming up or a photo shoot or a party that I want to invite you to, I'll go down my Instagram and just invite every single person I know. And so that'll kind of keep me in the loop with people that I might not have contacted mm -hmm. a long, in a long time. Right. So I'm just always staying on top of people. Uh, so social media has helped me with that tremendously because I'm, I'm horrible at it. <laughs> horrible at it. Who are, you said Damon John is a mentor of yours. He's a, he's a buddy of mine as well. He's been on the show a few times. Good guy. 
Who would you say are the the three biggest mentors you've had in the last year? Because you've gone through different stages of your career over the last two decades, but in the last year, a lot has happened in your life, professionally, personally, uh, obviously COVID, the worldwide uh, yeah. wise. Who do you lean on? Three people, and I know it's hard to probably pick three, but yeah. who's really helped you in this season of your life? Um, Damon's really been, mm-hmm. but we'll, we'll, we've already said him. Mentioned so, him, yeah. Three uh, new. We know Damon. Lena Waith um, is incredible. Uh, she re- reached out to me when I was at a really low point in my life, and it was crazy because I, because I didn't know her. And she reached out when I was going through some, you know, when you wake up one day and it's bad press Mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, man, the world is (laughs) over. And she just contacted me out of the blue. And we've kind of built a relationship over the past two years. Mm. And so even though we're similar in age, she's kind of served as a mentor uh, to me. Kevin Hart um, just continues to, you know, motivate and inspire me in so many ways. Uh, You guys had a lot of projects together, right? You've done movies and TV. Yep, we've done a, a ton of things together. Um, with Kevin and Will Packer, they're, they're great. But, but Kevin, uh, my birthday was was this April. It was a couple of months ago, and um, I I had him on IG Live, mm-hmm. and I was like, man, I gotta get a gym like yours. And Kevin surprised me by building a gym in my garage. No, he did not. Yes, he built a did gym. Did Boss in my come gar- out and build it for you? Boss or? came out <laughs> and he did the whole thing. And you know Boss wow. has all this energy and he's like, we're going to, and he yeah. built the whole, he put the floors in and the whole thing. Wow. And it, it motivates. So now I'm in the gym every day. Like I'm, I'm, I'm healthier than I've ever been. And I'm now using this to, to build somebody else a gym. Cause huh. I'm like, Kevin had no business building me a gym. I should have did it on my own. So now I got to pay it forward for him. But acts of kindness like that, Kevin just, it, it just, it amazes me at Kevin's level of success. His, his, level of connectivity and retention for for things he'll remember something we talked about six years ago really? and be like yo you didn't do this idea we talked about like what, what are you doing and so kevin's really good at that so i'll say kevin mm-hmm. i'll say lena and then um you know you know i'll, I'll say my parents who i didn't you know, i've always been close with them but more in a peripheral capacity and I've really taken this time over COVID to push myself to talk to them every day. Mm. So, so um, I, I just shot a movie with Deion Taylor, but prior to that, I was speaking to, with them every single day. We were either texting or doing, um, you know, photos or something mm-hmm. to each other. And now I try to, you know, every other day, every two days, wow. I try to talk to them. And, and just having that level of communication has really inspired me yeah. as well. You you were raised by a single mom, right? Or did you have a step? Stepdad? My stepdad came into the picture when I was like three, four years old. Gotcha. So your yeah. mom had you when she was 17? Yeah, yeah. She had me at a really young age. And you never met your father. Is no. he is he alive today? Do you know? Is he... he, he I, I don't know um, at all. For years, it was, a, it was just a touchy spot. And I, I had always... Th- there was a certain point where I felt like, oh, man, I don't want to reach out to this guy because... He wasn't there for my mom and he wasn't there for me. So why, why him. care about him? And yeah, exactly. Then there was a certain time where I was like, oh, well, now if I reach out to him, he's going to want something. Right. Um, and and now I'm at a place I'm at a different place of 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 maturity and understanding. And I hope he's alive. I would now talk to him and communicate with him. Because I think now at this stage of manhood, like, I, I wonder what the perspective of having me was like for him. Mm. Meaning I, I know my mom's version of this story and I know my rendition of how my life went. Yeah. But I'm sure him having me, I don't, I don't know any of what he was thinking. So I would love to hear that. And then also, you know, as we get older, I'm wondering what health wise is going to be mm. wrong with me. Do I have other siblings? So, yeah, so now I am starting to think about those things, really? and, and hopefully it's not too late. Yeah. Huh. Do you know how you could get in contact with him or where you'd even start? No. Um, I, I mean, I have resources. I could, yeah. I could figure it out. It's just going to be one day I'll wake up and actually do it. Uh, today's not that day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, one day, one day I'll sure. wake up and, 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 and do it. Well, you wrote a, a book about the wisdom from your mom, kind of lessons from your mom that she brought to you. What was the main lesson she taught you that really has stuck with you your entire life? To never give up. To never, ever give up. My mom, you know, got pregnant with me at 17. 
had me at a young age. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people, you know, could have called it quits. But she, you know, she strapped me to her back and moved us from New York down to North Carolina and, you know, worked multiple jobs with my stepdad and raised me. Mm. And then, you know, she ended up going back to school and, you know, achieving her dreams and they built their own house. And so I'm very proud of, of her. And she just would always tell me, like, you know, whatever it is, just don't give up. And that's yeah. just always been my mentality is just, you know, whatever. There's nothing that's unachievable in life besides me making the NBA. Uh, besides <laughs> that. Uh, you like to hoop a lot, don't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not any good anymore. But, I love uh, to play uh, some time. Yeah, I love to hoop. Yeah. Oh, st- yeah. Um, well, I don't know. You're, t- you're a big guy. I know. I'm a big you're guy. You're a big guy. You're yeah. a big guy. I don't yeah. know how I'm going to do out there. <laughs> I'm curious. What is the lesson your dad taught you in his absence? The greatest lesson he's wow. taught you, even though you've never met with him. Has he ever seen you? Did he, was he there as your, when you were born or the first few weeks or was he around? My mom t- tells me, uh, and again, these are, you know, it was always, for, for your entire life, something is a fact. And then at a certain no, age, not. you realize that, they, you know, it's, it's my mother's perception of what it was, mm-hmm. right? It could still be a fact. I just, you know, I am, I am open to the possibility that things might have been different from a different perspective, right? Mm-hmm. She, she says that when I was an infant, she ran into him at a corner store, a bodega in New York City somewhere, and, and that she told him to buy me like some formula and some diaper so that she could always say that he gave me something. Wow. And uh, so I do know that, that story. I just don't know anything really else. And again... I, my mom is such a ter- ter- terrific mom, mm. and I was blessed to have an incredible stepdad. And I was, you know, I was raised in a in a multicultural home. My stepdad is Puerto Rican, and and he and he looks white. Uh, and so I was just raised with, you know, my mom, Christian background, mm-hmm. dad, Catholic background, yep. Hispanic, and he could speak Spanish. You speak and, Spanish? No, I don't, but uh, I was raised around it. I should be able to. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was raised with all those upbringings. But what lesson did my dad teach me? In his absence. In his, in his absence is, you know, is, is that there, there's such an idealism that, having two parents or having this perfect American dream of a family is the recipe for success. And I think that I'm uh, an example of having a very spliced mm-hmm. upbringing in the 1980s in New York City. And, and you know, I went to multiple high schools, multiple middle schools, traveled up and down from New York to, and so I, I, I have a lot of the ingredients for a crazy person, uh, but uh, luckily I haven't turned out too crazy yet. Yeah. Not all the way there, but but you know I think you can achieve anything even if you don't have certain things in your life. Uh huh. Now I I heard somewhere that you're an introvert. Is that true? You're like introverted. I am to a certain extent. You're a yeah. certain extent. Is yeah. that true or not? I heard that somewhere. Yeah, maybe it is. maybe it you is. said that in an interview somewhere that I saw. Yeah, I have a, a facade of a personality that I kind of put on when I walk outside of the house. But you're unless, outgoing and this. Yeah, but I'm, but unless I'm genuinely interested, like I'm, gen, like I'm, I'm very, like I'm very curious about you and your business. So I'm very excited to be here uh, because I, I, there are certain things that, you know, will bring me out of my shell. But yeah. besides that, I'm like super like introverted. Really? But then I throw these really big parties at my house too. So <laughs> I'm kind of like great Gatsby as well. So it's kind of, you know. How like, does an intro, introverted person build uh, this, this kind of, mass connection lifestyle where you're connected to everyone you have a big personality on on screen on interviews things like that how do you uh how do you build deeper relationships when you kind of are more introverted because i think that's exhausting for a lot of introverts yeah, to yeah. be around a lot of people all the time it's a it's a defense mechanism and then once i was able to monetize it um, and socialize it and understand the value of it uh I was able to utilize it when I needed to. And like I said, I do love people and I love the core of humanity and I, I still believe in people. And so the, so it's not always putting it on, right? right, right. There are certain things that I love, love doing. 
but I can also like completely, mm. you know, be in my house for 48 hours working on a script, not talk sure. to anybody. You know, my you know, I'm like I said earlier, I'm notoriously horrible at following up on text messages, sure. and, you know, contact people. And Tiffany's over there like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know? And so uh, so, you, you know, when when you go to so many different schools growing up, and you have to switch your friendships and mm -hmm. make new friends and all those things, you kind of turn into a sociopath yeah. <laughs> to a certain extent, right? You always got to blend in, right? Sure. And so, you you know, you develop a big classroom personality to get yourself through and to, to make friends. And then once I was able to transition that personality into a radio personality uh -huh. and then a TV personality, then I was able to kind of, you know, function at a higher level of doing big shows and, and doing those things. But then coming off camera and, and, you know, really, you know, having two or three people in my life that I'm like obsessed with. And, right. And then right. That's, that's it. And then I'm obsessed with animals, too. So are you? Yeah. yeah I'm obsessed. obsessed. You have dogs and cats? Or yeah. Yeah. Both? Just dogs. Just dogs. Just dogs. How many do you have? Uh, three now. I've got a little Pomeranian. The little, best. My girlfriend does. It's mine though now. So, yeah, well, you um, know how that is. We it's amazing. He <laughs> probably loves you too. Oh, she probably, loves me. Probably, she, she loves, loves you. me. Loves you. That's how, that's dog. how it always is. I'm curious. Uh, what would you say is your greatest superpower and your biggest defect? Man, I guess my my greatest superpower is is I think people skills. Uh huh. I am. You'd be hard pressed to find somebody that you can dump off in any type of room and adjust accordingly. From the the most influential to the everyday person, and yeah, yeah be able yeah. to connect. I can I can you know be in the White House with uh, the Obama administration, of course. I I could be in that White House and function in a presidential library with scholars and dignitaries and princes and presidents, mm -hmm. and then I could be you know with T.I. at the Trap Museum in Atlanta, mm -hmm. you know, rolling dice, right? I sure. could, could kind of function in, 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 in all those spaces. Yeah, and your greatest defect? Uh, I got too many to name, <laughs> man. You're like, which uh, ex-girlfriend should I ask? Yeah, oh, you can ask any one of them, and they'll, they have, they'll probably have their own laundry list. What do you think is the, the thing that's holding you back from the next level on your dreams, your career dreams, your life goals? What's that thing? Maybe it's not a defect, but maybe it's just something that you see, uh, I need to become better at this. Definitely, you know, I, I have such a macro point of view on so many things that when I, like at any given time, I'm working on eight different projects. Yeah. And because of that, you know, most of them will never come to light, right? Mm -hmm. I'll never get any of those eight done. Uh, I might get one out of eight done, and it won't even be at my maximum capacity because I'm not great at focusing, mm. right? I have- Me too, it, yeah. yeah. It's so many tough. projects, it's so fun to have so many different things happening. You know, and, and then I end up, I, I end up working for everybody. Like right now, I work for everybody. Really? You know, it'll be one person will call me, you know, uh, my, my good friend Kenya Barris might say, hey, you know, let's do a dinner on this weekend. Let's put a, a good group together. Now I'm in this, you know, Lenny S. All your called. energy is on that weekend. I got to make sure Kendra's dinner is perfect. <laughs> yeah. You know, I got to make sure the guest list, Mark Burnett will call me and say, all right, we're doing this show. And then I'm like, okay, we're all. And so I'm so easily distracted, mm. so easily pulled um, in different directions. And again, the, the problem is when, when I didn't have anything, when I didn't have any money, it was a lot easier for me to focus, right? Because right. I knew I had to like do something to make to money. Make a right? dollar, you're like, yeah. yeah. But then when you wake up and you don't have to worry as much about money, then it just becomes like, what am I gonna do today, right? right. And then, and that's a dangerous position to be in. Uh, so that's my biggest thing is now like focusing. I've kind of taken, I would say like the last year off, if that, mm. you know, I've kind of, I've taken a lot of time to just like, B, I, I started working when I was 16 years old mm -hmm. and went straight through. Um, and I've been under contract. Uh, I've been under contract where there's a morality clause every every day of my life since I was 16 years old. So either I was from, you Meaning know. Meaning what? 
Meaning morality clause, what do you mean? Like you meaning, can't get into trouble? Yeah, meaning, you know, I was on commercial radio at 16 years old. I was on commercial radio all through high school. I started working for NASCAR right after. I started working at, I was at BET for eight years or something like that, seven years. I was at E! News for three years. I have an MTV deal. So I, I mean, meaning to say, if I ever did some crazy stuff, there was always in the back of my mind, I can directly lose this pot of money. Right. So I've always just operated like, you, you know. Cautiously. I've always operated cautiously. So now that you've been free for a year, are you just like reckless and just like, now I can do everything crazy I want to do? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> I don't care what happens and this and that. Yeah, <laughs> cross the board. Yeah. Having fun, absolutely. That's great, man. What would you say is the main vision for your life moving forward after 21 years of doing everything and going all in on so many different projects, do you have a main focus right now or is it still in discovery mode for the next stage? The loss, our collective loss mm -hmm. of Chadwick Boseman uh, has really changed my life. Mm. When, Are you pretty close? Not, not that close. Yeah. Definitely a, a, a solid rapport, um, but I admired him tremendously. Uh, and I looked up to him a lot. And, you know, every time we would meet each other, see each other in public, we'd have a, a, a conversation, and, you know, and he'd be like, oh, man, you the man, T. And I'd be like, no, you you are incredible. And I, I think, you know, and I say our collective law, because he was all of our Black Panther, right? We we all yeah. lost Chadwick. And, and to see the response after his loss, not just about his films and his work, but who he was as, as a person, right? The amount of time that he spent at hospitals with kids, mm. the amount of time that he spent giving back, and even just the mentality to not let people know that you were going through something, right? I'm such a big mouth that, you know, if something was wrong with me, everybody, I'm gonna have a whole tour. Everybody, come visit me, come <laughs> see me, I'm hurt. Right, I'm gonna have a whole pity. But the fact that he was like so like strong wow. to personally go through something like that, right? It, it like his whole life has just really inspired me. And so for me, like I know that like if I know that if I died tomorrow, like I got a I've done a lot of work, right? There, you know, I'm hoping BET would be able to have a whole day dedicated towards <laughs> things that I've done, right? I was on this TV show. I put out these movies, like. Your work will live on, right? Yeah. But I wanna, I wanna make a bigger impact on people. I want to right all wrongs that I've done in my life. Mm. Any business, any personal relationships, any family, anything that that I've had a deficiency in or I, I didn't, you know, nurture. I wanna, I wanna spend my the biggest part of my life nurturing that. I want to give back more. I want to help more. I want to inspire more. I want to be a better person. Yeah. Um cuz that's really that's really all it boils down to. It's like, you know, we we've, we've lost this last year, 2020, we've lost some incredible people. We've yeah. lost Kobe Bryant. You know, I'm still missing Nipsey Hussle. I'm still, you know, there was a a, a young rapper who's phenomenal named Pop Smoke who I got to spend a lot of time with. Uh, before he passed, uh, you know, in his in his very early twenties, and it's like, when when you look at this, this has been a hard year, yeah. you know. Yeah. And and for me, more than anything, I just want to impact people in a positive mm. way. Yeah. We had Kobe on. Tiffany was there when we filmed and interviewed. It was a really powerful episode and interview for me. Were you pretty close with Kobe? I know you yeah. spent a, uh, some time with him, but you know, 10, 15 year relationship of just wow. you know, and again. You know, in our industry, close is, you know, you have your close, and then you have the people that you see once a year, every mm -hmm. year for 15 years, right? Yeah. And it's like, it's 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 crazy, you know, I'm, I'm 38 years old, you know, to lose people in our mm -hmm. age range, you know? It's weird. It's the weirdest thing, and it's like, you know, you know, if you had some time with Kobe, you know how inspiring mm -hmm. yeah. he was. Game like changer. That. What was the big lesson he taught you? From, from knowing him personally, but also just experiencing him from afar. Man. So uh, Michael B. Jordan had the premiere for Just Mercy 
Uh, this is three weeks before Kobe passed. Wow. And Kobe hosted the premiere. Me and Kobe hosted the premiere for, it was for Mike and Jamie Foxx. And, um, Great movie, by the way. Yeah, yeah. So Brie Larson uh, was backstage. She's in Just Mercy. And uh, and so it's, it's me, Kobe Bryant, and Brie Larson randomly sitting backstage <laughs> waiting for Jamie Foxx to stop doing his comedy yeah. act, right? Random night that I'll always remember. And so I'm sitting kind of in the middle of them, and all of a sudden... I, I, I use my, you know, my, the, the, our hosting skills that kind of just come. Chameleon skills. You're yeah. Just like, yeah. And I just kind of <laughs> started connecting dots in a weird way, yeah. right, between the two of them. And I was like, man, you know, uh, we, you know you're know, Captain Marvel, and did you go watch a Because sometimes it's hard for people to connect. Of course. And I remember he was giving her advice via me, and, and the conversation was, was pretty much just on, like, being a champion and, and going after success. And what he said was that uh, it doesn't matter how much you accomplish, you know, on the field mm -hmm. and work or whatever. He was saying that his biggest accomplishment was being the high school coach for his, his daughter. Mm. And that spending time with her was, was more important to him than any of the chips that he won. Wow. And I remember, like, looking at that and I was like, oh, my God, you know, this guy who is, you know my favorite top three on anybody's list is saying now that it doesn't matter all the dunks, all the chips, all the MVPs, family is the most important. So for me, I got to start a family. I got to, you know, <laughs> I don't have any kids. I'm getting old. I got yeah. to gotta figure that out within the next year. So yeah. that's definitely like moved to my priority list. Who's been the most impressive person you've ever interviewed or met or worked with on set that you were just like, 360 Ooh. approach because there's some people like they're incredible at their career but yeah eh, not that good in family or relationships there's some people that are great in relationships or some people are good in their health others are great in career but a eh, little obese or whatever it's like who have you seen as like 360 whole human approach just like you're an unbelievable human being Man. all around obviously no one's perfect I, and they got their flaws I, I can name two people the most impressive would be Michelle Obama yeah uh, she is just impressive. And whatever there, so you could be around her in a room, right? She could be on the other side of the room and you won't see any handlers like near them, right? You, there's nobody that comes over and whispers in their ear. So then when, when it connects with you and then she'll come talk to you like 10 minutes later and she'll be like personal on you. Be like, oh, yo, how's it going with such and such? And I'm like, how do you, because you got to retain so yeah. much. So I, I, I am always impressed with like her level of retention and how she operates. Mm -hmm. I think Michelle Obama is just phenomenal. And then I don't know why he popped into my mind, but like the nicest guy I know is Jason Kennedy. Do you know Jason Kennedy? Oh, yeah, yeah. Jason nice Kennedy is just like guy. one of the nicest guys I know. I don't Super know why nice. JK popped into my mind, but JK is like one of the nicest guys I know. If I, if I could, like him and his whole crew of like Judah and all those guys, yeah, yeah. if I could like be nice like a person like genuinely he's very nice yeah J jk is like one of the nicest guys he, he's on e-news is that right or is he on uh what he, was the he's on e, yeah he's on e-news and you guys work together we work together yeah gotcha. we, we we co-anchored e-news for a while together and he's just like a really nice guy he's a good human being he's a yeah. good human being yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, i don't know he might have a torture chamber in uh <laughs> jason you might have a torture chamber in your garage i don't know but as far as i can tell you're one of the nicest <laughs> what do you think it takes to be a great host of a show, of a, you know, an event, of anything. Because you've done it all. You've yeah. done celebrity stuff, red carpet hosting, to events, to Miss America or Miss USA. Yep, yep, not sure yep. what it's called anymore, but you've done it all. How, what's, it, what's it take to be someone who wants to be a great host? Whether they want to be on a show or hosting a show, but just a great sh host in their life for their local events, for their friends and family? What do you think it takes? You want like broad or like some specific like? Both, yeah. Um, some specific things that pop into my head. Uh, read a lot and do your research, yes. right? The more you know about whatever you're going into, the better you're gonna be. Um, another specific thing that <laughs> gets me through a lot, don't try to pronounce or say a name if you don't know how to pronounce or say that name. Just ask them. Just either <laughs> ask the name 
count on your lower thirds yeah. to protect you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait for a producer to tell you in your ear if it's a, if it's a live event, or you know, <laughs> if, you know, the, the worst thing is if being on a red carpet oh, and man. interviewing a musician and you don't know how to say their name and saying it wrong and getting corrected. You've you, lost it. You've lost it. You're you better it. off just staying evergreen and saying, "How does it feel to be you're just staying evergreen?" Don't try to say a name wrong. That's I just I never try to get people's name wrong because that's you know it's important. It's very personal too and intimate. Very. I'm sure I've messed it up many times. We all have. Uh, big big uh, macro level things. Um, be yourself. Have fun. Yeah. Smile. Um, know your audience. Uh huh. And uh, you know hosting has changed a lot. Um, do you watch The Boys on Amazon? I don't. You have no. to see it. It's incredible. Wait, yeah, tell me about it. There's this superhero named Homelander, right? Okay. And he's so used to being like everybody's favorite hero that in this season, uh, there's like adversity and people like are starting not to like him, right? Okay. And one of the other superheroes tells him, she's like, look, you got to stop trying to be a superhero for everybody. Mm. The world just doesn't work. This ain't the 60s. You can't be, there's no more Johnny Carson. You just aren't it for everybody anymore, right? Stop focusing on being the greatest person for 300 million Americans and, and be, if you can be great for 50 million, being specific, do that, right? Mm -hmm. And that's been one of the hardest things in my life is that my personality type is like I feed off of love, I feed off of energy, yeah. and I'm so used to you know, being cool and everybody loving me. And, you know, this, the world now is not like that. Like people will hate you just because a lot of people like you. Right. right. And so my advice to young hosts is to just be specific to who you are and don't worry about trying to please everybody. You're not mm. going to be able to please everybody. Yeah. Focus on who you, who you are, focus on your craft and the people that are supposed to love you will love you. And then those that don't, you don't have to worry about it, mm. you know, but there's enough to go around for everybody. So just focus on being you. For someone that wants to, as the people pleaser in you, like I do as well, you want everyone to love you. Yeah. How do you get over that when someone doesn't love you? Oh, it's the hardest thing in the world for me, right? And I'm still not over it, right? I can yeah. I can post a photo and have a hundred comments that are positive, but if one hundred and one is like F this guy, my whole afternoon is like, man, what did I do to get, you know what I'm saying? Like, and so mm. I, I, you know, it it's it 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 takes really loving yourself. This quarantine has been amazing for me in that regard of like. You know, I can't do shows anymore and feel the love. I gotta and really, hug it out and be like, "Oh, what's up?" Yeah, I gotta love myself. Ooh, and that's and that's been the greatest thing. And then when you love yourself and you realize, like, if 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 I operate from an honest space and I operate from the space that that God is flowing through me, what I say, even if the message is not for everybody, I'm operating from truth, mm -hmm. and there's nothing more powerful than that. Yeah. How did you learn to love yourself? Um, it's a process. It's uh, surrounding you know your, yourself with the the right people that will mm -hmm. will love you for you, right? I, I've had times in my life where I was surrounded by the right wrong people. Yeah, and it's hard to love yourself when you have negative energy that's directly in front of you, right? Meaning, if I wake up in the morning and say, you know what, today I'm gonna change the world, and I'm you know, with the person that's saying, you ain't gonna change nothing. It's hard to overcome that, right? So surrounding yourself yeah. with the right people. How do you um, surround yourself with the right people in the world of Hollywood and the world of entertainment when sometimes you don't know if someone's trying to connect with you for another reason or if they're genuine, can they really open up to you? How do you find yourself being able to be discerning with other people that you're meeting to know like if this is gonna be someone you wanna build a deeper relationship with? Yeah or if they're just trying to get something from you? I think it comes with maturity. I think yeah. it comes with time. I yeah. think instinctually at age 38, I'm, I'm a better judge of character and intention than I was at age 28, yeah. and a much better judge of character and intention than I was at age 18. Um, so I think with, with, with time, you're able to kind of differentiate what it is. Sure. Uh, for, for me, um, it's, it's, 
it's being around, you know, I, I would always surround myself with people I had to help. Now, mm. I'm very keen to surround myself with people that can help me, right? I would have, I, I've had a person like Damon John, mm -hmm. who we've mentioned in my life for years and years. I've never asked him for anything, yeah. right? I've never asked him to like, hey, help me, be my mentor. Like, you know, I'm in, I, you know, last year I was in $10 million tax bracket. How do I crack a $100 million tax bracket for next year, right? And so, and he was like, I've been waiting for you to ask me that. Right. Let's talk, <laughs> right, right? And so it's it's reaching out to the people that you respect, to the people that you love, and, and you know, and then knowing where you want to make new friendships and relationships, right? Yeah. Like, if you and me become friends, I'm going to help you, and you're going to help me. Right, and it's going to be a mutually beneficial thing. Two people from completely different walks of life, but you can already tell by us sitting down, just the positive energy. Right? For sure. I don't want anything from you. Yeah. You don't want anything from me. But that's how you make that's how you make the best friendships and yeah. relationships. Because then it's just it's it's building from a, a place of love and respect. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I've tried to surround myself with those people. I still have day one people around me, yes. Mm -hmm. But I now try to, you know, I wake up and I have conversations with people that I want to have conversations with as opposed to allowing, you know, my man from the hood that just always, oh my God, I can't, I can't do, you know, I can't always do that. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Who's the person you've always wanted to have a conversation with that you haven't had yet or you haven't met yet? Because you've interviewed everyone, it seems like. Ooh, Who's man. that person? I mean, you've literally talked to everyone, I feel like, but. Man, let me uh, let me come back to that. That's mm -hmm. a good one. I don't get stumped too much. I want to give you a good answer. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you who I'm afraid of, for whatever reason, Jay-Z. Still to this you day. You interviewed him though, right? Not just interviewed. I go to his house for New Year. It's just one of those people. I'm even better around Beyonce. What is it about Jay-Z that makes you nervous? I, or? So, so, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, so Lenny S, who's Jay, one of Jay-Z's best friends, is my roommate, right? And so... Right now. Right now, right? Jay-Z's best friend is your roommate. Jay-Z's best friend. So you spend weekends with him, you're at New Year's parties, you're hanging out. Could not see the guy more, right? <laughs> and I've known the guy 15 years. So what, Jay-Z or his friend? Both. Okay, yeah. For whatever reason, <laughs> <laughs> for whatever reason, I don't know. I guess it's just something about Jay. I don't know. I just, I, he's the one person I freeze up around. I don't freeze up around Obama. Uh, I spend a, a ton of time with Kanye, Beyonce, Rihanna I love, just Jay-Z is the one person, uh, I could be around Brad Pitt, George Clooney, it doesn't matter, Jay-Z is the one guy who really? I, I don't know why, I don't know why, I don't know, Jay's just too cool. He's, After he's, 15 he's, years of being around him, just, still. There's always that one, there's always there's that always one, <laughs> yeah, there's always, and, and, and so Lenny S, who, who's my roommate, his friend, he uh, he tears me a new one every time. He's like, I could not have given you more alley you. And he was like, and Jay-Z can smell your fear. He smells your fear. So now when he's around, he, he, he sees smells, you trembling. He smells your blood. He, he can smell it in the water. I'm like, oh my God, I can't. I just can't. I always fumble when I'm around. I'm like, always, to this day. Uh, how often do you experience self-doubt? Is it just around Jay-Z or is there when you're launching a new movie or a project? Or oh no, every day, you know. Every day, I, uh, you know, I'm doubtful about something. You know, um, I'm a, I'm a very, I have a very big personality, and I have a lot of energy that I put out into the world. And you know, I'm, I'm very proud of what I've accomplished. But I'm, I'm always, you know, there's always doubt. Um, I think my ability to overcome that doubt is is why I've been able to be successful, mm -hmm. right? So when I was at 106 in Park, you know, there weren't a lot of multi-hyphenates at the time like there are now. Yeah. And, you know, I wanted to be an actor. And there were a lot of people that told me I couldn't do that. And I had a lot of self-doubt. But it's, my, it's, it's my, in, 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 my ability to say, yo, forget it and go after it that allows me to do both. Yeah. Um, so I, I think, yeah, but I have self-doubt every day. Really? And that's okay. Yeah. What are the three things you do to improve your self-confidence when you doubt yourself? Ooh, what do I do to improve my self-confidence? You know, I, I, don't, I don't... How do you not stay stuck in the doubt? You know what I mean? It's like, because a lot of people in the world doubt themselves on a new project or meeting someone or whatever mm -hmm. it may be, just going to their job and presenting something new, they doubt themselves. How do you continue to say, I feel this, but I'm gonna do it anyways? 
and put it out there. Hopefully it works. So that's a, it's, it's a joint thing for my career, and it kind of goes to what I was saying earlier. So the, the whole first half of your career, almost the first half of your life, you, you're operating <laughs> off of a necessity, right? Yeah. When I was coming out of college, I had student loans. Yeah. I was poor. I was living on, in my best friend's basement, right? And so any self-doubt that I had was overshadowed by my need to pay rent, right? And because of that, I was able to overcome it because it's like, all right, if I don't do this, I can't eat tonight. Right. And so that that is a driving factor like no other. When you're rich, it becomes a lot harder because you, you uh, maybe not just rich. When you've acquired success and people have seen your level of success, then it's it's scarier because now you don't have to do things. And if you do things and fail at them, you can really suffer embarrassment. Right. Meaning if I would have failed coming out of college, nobody would have saw it. No cares. Been, yeah. Your mom or whatever. Yeah. It's like, OK, your buddy you're living off the basement with. Whatever. Right. Keep going. Now, yeah. if I you know, I have uh, three million followers on Instagram, three point one. Right. If I put out a product and I feel like it crashes and burns, there are three million immediate people that are going to look at me, blogs that will pick it up if I do something bad. Right. So getting over this self-doubt almost becomes more complicated when you have more to lose. I think in order to overcome all of that, you just have to dig deep, believe in yourself, believe in something higher than you, mm -hmm. you know, believe in God or believe in whatever it is that gets you through it. And like I said, for, for me, it's surrounding myself with the, the ecosystem of, of support and love is yeah. like, you know, when I go through it, I, I have the people that I call that help pull me out of the grave. And, and because of that, you know, I'm invincible. And, and, mm. and because of enough of that, it's all in me. And if I have to do it on my own, I can. Yeah. What do you think is the thing you haven't yet healed from your past? Jesus Christ. Lewis. <laughs> I'm, Jeez. A big, I'm a big believer that uh, if there is um, pain from our past, it could be a small pain. Like last week, I got in an argument with someone and I haven't healed it yet. Or something from childhood. You know, for me, I went through sexual abuse when I was a kid, and it was something I held on to for 25 years oh until God. I started to, to heal it when I was 30, about seven years ago. There's always a pain or something unhealed from our past, and I think it's always going to hold us back or it's going to yeah. create negative emotions somewhere if we don't learn to heal those things. So I'm curious, is there any unhealed situations, experiences from your past whether it be recent or... Man, um, yeah, I would have to really self-analyze and dig deep to, to give you... I mean, clearly, I'm sure that, you know, never meeting my biological dad, you know, plays a part yeah. in, you know, and, and being an only child plays a part in my detachment from other people and my, you know inability to sometimes connect in relationships. Um, I'm sure that all of my many failed past relationships have have led to, you know, fear of commitment, fear mm. of, you know, getting my heart broken again, fear of breaking hearts again. You know, um, career-wise, it has been pretty on par with what I, I've, I've wanted. But, you know, I've, I've, I haven't always been the best version of myself, right? There are sets that I might have been rude on, mm. you know, times in my career where I wasn't, you know, at peace with myself or I was going through things. And so, you know, I just, again, like I was saying, you know, I'm just at a place now where all of the pain body and all of the experiences now, I've kind of just compartmentalized it into one thing yeah. and just using it all as fuel to, to move forward. You know, sure. I, I just, I want to wake up every day now and be the best version of myself yeah. and have every single person when I walk on set, I want every single human being that I come like, yo, he's a nice guy. He was, he was good. Yeah. He was great. He was, you know, he was on time. I was 10 minutes late, but he was, on, he was, <laughs> he was here. He was great. You texted me early, let me know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. I was asking, uh, you know, Essence, Essence the actress. Yeah, Essence, yeah. I was yeah, texting Essence, her before, yeah. she's a friend of mine, and I was like, "You ever worked with Terrence?" She's like, "Yeah, we worked on. A, I think you guys worked on a movie together, yeah, or on a set yeah. for something, some Cute. project." Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
She was like, yeah, he's always been a great guy, stand-up yeah. guy. So oh, that means a lot. To know Essence is incredible. Amazing actress. Oh, my God. Amazing person. Too. Great person. Right? She's great human incredible. Being. Yeah. Incredible, incredible. I want to talk about commitment issues for a second because I feel like we're very similar to the fact that I've always wanted to like find love and be in great relationships, but then I'm always afraid to fully commit of yeah. like whatever reason, missing out on <laughs> other opportunities or is it going to pull me back from my dreams or my career? Is it going to take time away from something? I feel like I'm in the right relationship now and it's been amazing to yeah. experience the other side. What do you think is the reason why you've had commitment challenges in the past in relationships in general? Not with a specific person, but just what do you think that is that holds you back from going all in on a relationship um, and wanting to be committed, I guess, long term? I'm, I'm sure that there's an educated way to say it. I'm sure <laughs> that there's... You know, I, uh, we could dig into the male what's psyche. The, what's the raw? And we the could raw do all that. Yeah. yeah, but the raw, you know, I've just, I've, I've f***ed a lot of things up, right? Yeah. And I've made a lot of mistakes. And so whether or not it was the mistakes that I made in a relationship, trusting the wrong people, going down the wrong, you know, w regardless of, of any of the relationships that I've mm -hmm. ever been in, I just, I'm, I'm at a place now of like, look, I got to take responsibility for, I've never been perfect in a relationship. Yeah. And I got to take responsibility for that, right? I've always contributed to the demise, mm. right? And, <laughs> of and that relationship. 100%. 100%. And so for any, there's, no, there's not one ex-girlfriend that I can look at and say it was all their fault, mm -hmm. right? They could probably look at me and say it was all his fault. <laughs> but there's not one that I can look at and say it was all their fault, right? So at this stage of my life now, it's self-reflecting and looking and saying, okay, here are the things that I've heard about myself, right? <clears throat> here are the goals that I want to accomplish in a relationship. Here are the things that have held me back from getting there. And, you know, these are the things that I got to do to get what I want. Right. Mm -hmm. And and so, you know, a, a lot of guys cheat. Right. Cheating is a is 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 a thing that happens. I feel cheating is connected with the universe. Mm. You always get caught. Right. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't get caught by the person, the universe will catch you. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at why some of your relationships fail, it's because you weren't a good guy. You didn't do the right things. Right. I'll tell you a story. Stay in a girl. This must have been <laughs> 10. No, no. May have been like 13 years ago. And a group of friends of mine were in uh, Miami and the, the girl, I lived uh, with, with the girl in New York, right? And the group of friends were like, let's just go to DR uh, Dominican for this Republic. weekend. Dominican yeah. Republic and just get in trouble. Right? And you're in, you're in North Carolina, you're in New York? I'm where, in New York. Yeah. And I'm in a, I'm in a committed relationship, right? <laughs> And, and so, and she doesn't go with you to DR. No, she wasn't in Miami. She knew I was in Miami, right? Mm -hmm. But there's nothing but trouble. <laughs> DR. DR is a very fun place yeah. to get yourself in trouble. So me and the fellas, we we were on a flight, and then we hop a little extra flight to DR, right? And we do an extra little weekend, and we get we get into all types of trouble, all types of bad trouble in DR, right? Come back home, and. I rip a page because you, when uh, this is they, pre social media, this is pre social media. This is like, yeah, 100%. So they stamp my passport <laughs> in DR, right? <laughs> you just came for Dominican Republic, boom, right? So on my way home, I'm thinking in advance, I'm like, you know what? I'm about to travel with my girl, I'm gonna take this page out of my passport. No, you did not, just in case she happens to hold the passports and look at them. Isn't that right? illegal or something? I'm coming to that in a minute, right? <laughs> Get back, have the, uh, we, uh, girl doesn't know I went to DR. No idea. In the relationship, everything's fine. Time goes by, everything's fine. More time goes by, everything's fine. End the relationship on some mutual, mutually mm -hmm. beneficial things. Yeah, yeah. Everything was fine. That whole relationship, I got away with it, right? I thought everything was going to be fine, right? Started dating a new girl. I'm in it. I'm fully in Excited. love. Excited. I think this girl is everything, right? Go. I go on a trip with the new girl, right? We go. We're headed to uh, an island. And when I land in that island, and this was a year and a half after I had done the dirt, 
I land on the island and they don't let me in because my passport was tampered with and it wasn't a, a legit passport, right? The girl who I liked, we had a whole group of friends. Oh. The girl who I liked, I was like, just go ahead and go on the trip. They won't let you. So when I landed, they was like, you have two choices. Either we can wait for the judge to come look at your passport and approve it. It could take three days, maybe. It could take three days. Yeah, yeah. But if not, you have to stay in jail overnight or you can fly back home. So I flew back home immediately. And the girl that I liked met a new guy Shut on up. that trip. No, he didn't. That she started dating and she left me for. She right? did not. 100%, right? No way. And all I could do was laugh because the dirt that I had done within a different relationship in a whole different time came back to me with my messed up passport because I was, right? And so wow. what you realize is that karma is, is, it will always come back for you. It will always, and it might not be, you might not get caught for the crime that you committed. But if you do dirt, you will get caught. It will happen to you. And it'll be something else that you want, and it'll happen to you, and you will get caught. So that's always my lesson, like, with, with, with moving forward is, like, I'm trying to operate just being a good person, <clears throat> knowing that the universe will take care of me. Because if you don't, you will go down. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, the relationship I'm in now, within the first week or two of us kind of starting the date, I opened up about just everything from my past. I was like, you know, here's where I did right, here's where I did wrong, everything, right? Clean, like about everything. And she goes, one thing I request from you, you will always be honest with me and tell me the truth. And I said, are you sure? Because I don't know if you can handle it. Because most relationships I tell the truth, they can't handle it. Yeah. That's why I hold back a little bit sometimes and then turn more and more. And yeah. I said, are you sure? She said, yes, I can. And it feels amazing. Now, there's times where I tell her the truth where she can't handle it. Yeah. And it's hard because it's a challenging conversation. Not because I did something wrong, but she just didn't like the truth or whatever it was. But it feels amazing to be 100% clean mm -hmm. on your side of the street. Whether the relationship works out forever or doesn't work out, I know that I'm a piece inside. Yeah. And I'm a piece whether it's we're together forever and have babies or we break up today. Yeah. It's like I feel clean, <laughs> peace. And it's not because I did anything wrong or said anything wrong. It's it's because it just wasn't the right fit. Is there any better feeling than that? It's incredible, man. It's like you, to wake up and like not look over your shoulders. And here's the thing. It's funny because so many guys have come to me over the last year. Because I'm dating a very high profile person from Mexico who's got a big following and, and, a lot, and very desirable for a lot of men. And... I have zero insecurity or jealousy. And almost in every relationship in my past, I've been very protective, let's say. Mm -hmm. Like if a guy gave a weird look or said something down the street, it was like I wanted to fight and yeah. kind of protect. Yeah. It's, I don't know what it is, maybe because I'm older now, I'm 37. Yeah. I don't know, it's just like going through a lot of different breakups in the past. I'm just like so not jealous anymore. Yeah, It's weird yeah. to have that feeling. But it feels incredible because I don't feel like I'm ruining the relationship from those emotions. And yeah. I think because I'm being so honest and clear and clear and truthful, it's making me less insecure mm -hmm. whether she is in, as, as well, right? Yeah, yeah. So I don't know, I just feel at peace, like if it doesn't work out, it's not meant to be. There's no greater feeling. It's incredible, man. There's no greater feeling than not having to check your you know your phone knowing that the a call, I don't have to Delete have a passport, something. a password, nah. word, nothing. It's all good. If she opens up and looks at any social media, I don't have to worry about a thing. Bro. It's amazing. You can hold my phone, call your mom, <laughs> I'm gonna go to the kitchen, yeah. and I'll be, I'm, you know, oh, you have my phone? It's okay. Yeah, exactly. If you're not, uh, it's the best feeling in the world. It's great. You've got to that Great point feeling. too? I'm, yeah, I'm just at peace with everything. <laughs> I'm just at peace with everything. And as a good interviewer, I know where you go with this next, so I'm just, I'm at peace with everything. <laughs> That's good. I'm curious about imposter syndrome. For me, I believe a lot of people don't believe they are enough for the next situation to be on the stage and give a speech in front of an audience, to launch a book, yeah. to be in the room with the Obamas or yeah. whoever is in their industry. How do you deal with imposter syndrome, thinking like, I'm just a kid from Queens with you know a single mom who I don't have my dad, I've worked my way up, and now I'm in the room with Jay-Z or the Obamas yeah. or whoever it may be. Do you deal with imposter syndrome ever? 
And if so, how do you deal with that to know you belong in the room? I, I don't, I, I don't, I'm trying to think if I do. I don't feel like I deal with imposter syndrome as much. I feel like I have a ton of flaws. I don't, I don't particularly know if that's one of them or if that's how I would categorize mm -hmm. it. When I, when I walk into a room with those people, like I, I have a defense mechanism that I just kind of auto, automatically put on. I, I have a bag of tricks, yeah. right, that, you know, I'm just able to access for years. Yeah. What? <laughs> you know, just things that... I think of the book The Game when you said that. Have you, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's 100%. like, you try to pick up a girl, 100%. you've got the pickup line, you've got That's this it. magic trick, you're well, like, hey. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> there, there are those certain things that will connect with anybody <clears throat> that I, I'm, I'm easily able to access, whether you're talking to Obama or whether you're talking to... You know, uh, Sean Penn, th there's always just certain things that... What are those things? Those three key things that you can connect with anyone in a moment from meeting them. I'm a student. I, I know a lot about a lot of people. So, like, sports are always those things. Now, the pandemic is always one of those things. Um, you, you know, I, I'm able to look at what you're wearing, piece it together, find the common denominators. You know, then I have my other bag. I got... You know, voices I can go into, things that I, you know, like I, when I'm in a room with people and I have to put on in that room, I, I just, I know what's worked for me in the past and how to, how to take over that What room. do you mean voices? Like you'll, like voice over? Like you just try to do it? I mean, I don't know, what, what do you mean? Like you try to be like Mike Tyson, you try to be like Kevin Hart? No, 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 no. What do you not, mean voices? No, no, there are certain, there are certain inflections uh, that Tonality can, of your voice. Yeah, there, there's certain tonality of my voice that I can use to accomplish what I want to accomplish. Like what? Give me an example. You walk in with Obama or Jay-Z, even though you mess it up every time. You yeah. walk in with someone like Obama for yeah. the first time and you've got to connect, you've got three seconds before you got to do the next thing. How do you it doesn't connect? really work. Okay, I'm trying to, okay, how does You know it what I mean? Yeah, okay, say. Uh, what do you say to Obama the first time? Like, right. are you looking at his shoes right away? You seen him watch? You seen like the the flag, the president? So, like, so you're when like, I so when I met so basketball, I, I, you're trying I, I to will, access everything. So what I'll do for like an Obama, like so if I'm in the White House for the first time, mm -hmm. I will I will I will access something that I know everybody around us experiences that I feel like people would be unable to say to him and I'll be able to crack the barrier by expressing that thing, right? So like, I, I think the first thing I met when I, I, I met Obama, when you go into the White House, they have, and you go into the bathroom, they have napkins, right? And those napkins say the white, you know, the White uh -huh. House, right? Obama administration, whatever they say, right? So like, I whisper to, to a side, like, <laughs> I stole a lot of napkins. To Just Obama. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You I'm said this to him. Now. Please don't have a secret security. <laughs> and he he just busts out laughing, he's right? He's dying, yeah. He's dying laughing, right? It doesn't matter who you are. Saying that to some, like, like the moment, and, it, and it'll come, like, he'll be like, oh, so nice to meet you. He'll be like, I stole a lot of napkins. I'm sorry. They're in my pocket. I'll take them back if you need. Like, he's dying laughing, right? He's sure. already dying laughing, right? So, so I'll just figure out what <clears> I feel <throat> like. The per and then knowing his personality, and you know he's sharp with it too. Mm -hmm. He'll be like, "You have ten seconds to get through. You know, I can't remember what it was, but, but he he completely played like, into it. Roger, get he's out like, of yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he was so you know generous about it and fun about it. And then from there on, it was like the the barrier was broken, right? Uh huh. I think it's just you know as, as hosts, especially with with it, it's important to just find those wow. common. <sighs> You know, denominators break down those walls, and and then once I once I get you that first you know hook, then I can do anything in the room. Then right. I then I feel invincible. Then I'm 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 good. What about if it's a scenario where you're in a room at an event or a party, and you don't know you're meeting this person? Like you knew you were going to meet Obama, so you kind of had a preparation to go into it. But uh, Tom Cruise hits you on the back mm -hmm. of the shoulder, and you're like, oh, what do you say when you turn around? or someone introduces you real quick to someone, what's that tool that you'll access to make sure you create a great impression and start to build that relationship? Yeah, it's, uh, it, it comes, it, it, again, that, that comes from what I call a bag of tricks. Yeah. So what, I, what I'll say is, I remember, this is before Wikipedia, I would study people, right? Mm -hmm. I would look you know, up people, 
you know, I mean, you and I are older than the internet, right? So we know what it's like to look on the encyclopedia, yeah. look at magazines, do research. I'm a student of people. Yeah. It, you know, whether it's somebody on Broadway, whether it's an ice skater, like I'll, I'll try to know so that if Tom Cruise knocks on my shoulder, I'm able to say, yo, your last movie, whatever, right? I'm always able to flip into it if I'm at that type of event. Now, if he catches me at the grocery store, you know, I'm not saying I haven't fumbled, but I would say out of out of eight times of getting caught off guard, I'm, I mean, 10 times of getting caught off guard, I'm pretty good at seven to eight of them. Yeah. Two of them I might fumble through, but most of the time I just, I just, I study enough about a lot that I'm, I'm able to just flex into to, to one of my bag of tricks. What's the greatest skill you think every human being should learn from this movement moving forward if they haven't already learned this skill? Is it the art of studying people? Is it having a bag of tricks? Is it... Uh, you know, health and wellness. Like, what is the skill you think people need to learn the most to help them in their life? Is to is to is to maximize your potential of what you're great at. The greatest thing that you can do is tap into your genius. One thing Jay Z will say is that every single one of us has genius in us. We're all brilliant. Where a lot of us are scared to tap into what that is. And a lot of us want to tap into the wrong thing instead of actually focusing on what you are passionate about and what you can be great at. You know, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, if you wanted to be a host, the thought was for you to be as evergreen as possible, right? Back then, I was getting booked for everything. I'm, I'm hosting... You know, NBA slam dunk contest shows, I'm hosting Miss USA. I'm ho That's why am I, because I'm an evergreen host, right? Today, it's not about that. Like, there's a fishing channel. If you're about fishing, right. hone in on that, right? You don't have to be an expert bowler to be the greatest person on the Food Network, right? You don't have to know everything about fashion in order to excel on CSNBC, right? <clears throat> so... Whatever you're passionate about and you love, and this is not just for being a host, but to find true success and to find true happiness, mm. I think the, the true ingredient is to focus on what you love yeah. and what you're passionate about. Yeah. And then you'll be able to find success in any aspect of your life. Do you feel like you could have been farther along if you weren't as evergreen and kind of like trying to host on different platforms for different audiences, but more focusing on one genre, one audio. I guess you were on one platform for a long time, but yeah. you're also hosting yeah. different places. Um, you know, I'm really happy today with where I'm at. Yeah. I'm really happy with, with, with where I'm at. If I could trade careers with anybody, I, I don't think I would do it. Mm. I think that I'm in a position now that, you know, when I'm in my 50s and 60s, I'll be able to enjoy a Steve Harvey-esque career and you know, mm, that'd be I, fun. I, yeah, you know what I mean. I feel like I'm, I'm in a position to do that, right? You know, would I have wanted to focus and you know, be the video game guy and just you know, I, I love a lot of things, yeah. you know, and I have a lot of fun doing a lot of things, um, and I, I you know, I'm, I love my career, yeah. like I love my career, and I love the level that I'm at. You know, there were times when being famous was really, really cool. And now, it, I don't think it's as cool. You Why know, not? Back when I really wanted to be famous, you were famous because you were great at something, right? You know, oh my God, that person walking down the street just put out a number one album. Oh my God, that person walking down the street, you know, is the fastest running back in the, right. right? Oh my God, that is a brilliant writer who put out a book, who, whatever, right? Now, just anybody can be famous. You could be famous for, you know, being on Instagram and doing whatever or having, you know, whatever reality show, whatever. Right. Like, there's just so many ways. Just have one to, piece of content and be famous. And you could be yeah. famous for anything, right? Yeah. And I'm not demeaning, I'm not talking shit about anybody's level of getting to, to, to where they're famous. But now it's like, that's not as cool. Now what's cool to me is being great, mm. right? Being great at something, school of greatness, right? It's like, what are you great at, right? How do you impact people and how do you help people, yeah. right? 
I'd rather, I'd rather have, you know, an experience, if I have to spend a day where one person has an incredible experience with me that day, mm. as opposed to, you know, being cool in front of a hundred people in a, in a gymnasium that don't really care about me, right? So yeah, I just I just feel like the world has has shifted, mm. and now there, there's so many more humans that you can be more specific with what you want to do, sure. and you can still be great, <clears throat> yeah, and still make a lot of money, you know. I don't want to forecast too far ahead, but you're gonna be forty in a year and a half. Yeah, and it's hard for me because I'm gonna be forty in I guess two and a half years. Um, what would you say are the biggest lessons you've learned in this past decade from 30 to <laughs> almost 40? Although you're probably going to learn a lot in the last year and a half yeah. until you hit there. But what would you say are the biggest lessons you've learned since 30 till now? Um, you know, everything from the four agreements. Right? Oh, I love the, that book. You no, know, don't take anything personally. So hard. We live in a world where everybody can reach you at any time and say something to you. And you got to realize that everybody's words towards you is only a reflection of how they are feeling and to not take anything personally, um, you know, to never, ever give up. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody can stop me from doing anything that I want to do. Nobody. There's no there's you know, there's there's just nobody. But but me. Right. Only I can make the decisions that can stop myself from getting to a, a place that I want to get. But not letting any no stop you from going after your dreams and then the 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 next biggest lesson is just to be a good person mm. to be a kind person we you know humanity right now is at a as at a turning point you know we got the biggest vote of our lives coming up the the sky is on fire because of global warming um you know there's so many movements i can't even count them right you know i'm marching for black lives matter I'm fighting for LGBTQ. I'm fighting for Me Too movement. I'm mm -hmm. fighting for uh, what's the new? There's a new one that's just happening. Like that I, I want to. I want everybody to 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 progress and feel love. And you know, I'm fighting for humanity. That's mm -hmm. the movement I'm fighting for. I'm fighting for humanity to to reach our maximum potential. And 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 you know, in that fight, I think the 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 key ingredient, as as cliche as it may sound. <clears throat> It's just love. Yeah, we gotta love each other more. You know, we gotta support each other more. We gotta be there for each other more. We gotta understand each other more. We gotta show more love. Yeah. What's your definition of love? My definition of love is God. Mm. God is love. My definition of love is pouring into other people the light. And the positivity that you want poured into yourself, being selfless in that way, you know, giving back, mm. empathy, sympathy, emotion, um, yeah, all all of that is 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 yeah. love, you know. Yeah. What's the thing you're most proud of that a lot of people maybe don't know about? So you've accomplished a lot of things, worked with a lot of people. You, you give back a lot, you do a lot of philanthropy work, you're fighting for human rights, but what's the thing you do that you're most proud of? I don't know, that might go on, I, I don't know, that's a tough one. That's a <laughs> tough one. You know, it, it's, it's, you know, there's certain people that, <clears throat> you know, you know, that, that have one thing that's so great that they can be proud of it. And I just have so many little things mm -hmm. that it's hard for me to like really focus on one that I could say is my most proud accomplishment. Even, I don't think even I'm, something that's not a something that people maybe don't know about. People, maybe it's not a big accomplishment, but it's something you changed or you learned or you developed or a relationship that you reestablished after it was hurt for a long time, or you showed up somewhere that no one knew about and you built a great relationship with someone. So something internally that you're like, you know what, I'm really proud of this. I'm I'm really proud of, you know, the relationship I've developed with my parents. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying that we weren't close in the past, but you know, I, I've really made an effort to to become closer. My dad has a has a lot of health issues, and you know, I, I want him around for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And just the more I get to know both of my parents, my my stepdad and my mom. Um, the more proud I am of, of the relationship and the bond that we've developed. Mm. I'm going to throw a hypothetical question out there. 
let's say your dad shows up in the next six months and wants to meet you. And he says, you know, I've been following your entire life. I've seen everything you've done. I've just been afraid to come and approach you, whatever reason. But I've seen all your accomplishments. I've seen your work on TV, movies. You've done amazing. What would you want him to say that he's most proud of about all the things you've done and the person you've become through your ups and downs, if that ever happened? You know, going to college, um, I think education is really important. You know, uh, buying homes, you know, buying real estate, you know, not many people in my family Mm -hmm. were able to you know, do that. I think a lot of times, especially for black people, all we're a lot of first generation everything, mm-hmm. right? You know, we don't have houses handed down to us as, as much. We don't have, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of family members that went to college that are able to get you into the alma mater. Like, you know, we're, we're either first or second generation. You know, we're rarely third generation anything in this country. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the, those American dream things for me of yeah. of education, home ownership, property, uh, and then you know the fact that I, I will be in a position to provide hopefully my kids with sustainable wealth for a long time and leave them something. Um, I think those those three things are the pillar of, of yeah. the American dream, and the fact that I was able to accomplish those things uh, without him directly in my life. I hope that he would be proud that mm. that I was able to do those. That's things. cool. Yeah. yeah. Because I think the statistic is that most uh, young black men without a father in the home, I'm going to butcher the stats, but the, the education rate of, you, of young black men finishing high school or having lower reading levels or something is extremely low based on them not being in the home. As yeah. if, if they were in the home, it'd be much higher. I'm not sure the exact stat, yeah. but I remember hearing that. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know what the stats are. I mean, I knew when I was growing up how bad the stats used to sound. I mean, mm-hmm. but look, it's 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 pretty turnkey and easy to understand, right? If you have two people at mm-hmm. home making sure you're doing your homework and making sure you get home on time, <laughs> yeah. it's a lot better than one, right? Yeah, stay out of trouble. Yeah, exactly, yeah. stay out of trouble. You know, the more disciplinary uh, factors that you have in your life that are able to control you to 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 go to school and focus on those things, uh-huh. the more you'll be able to focus on those things and go to school, right? The more, you know, uh, in a lot of cases, right? And so when you're able to find <clears throat> outliers in those cases, it's, you know, it's, it's to be applauded. But again, I think that the world is moving, you know, I think us as a culture, we're moving in the right direction. I just think it's going to take time. It's not yeah. going to happen overnight. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a marathon, not a sprint. How did you use, how did you develop a mindset <clears throat> to achieve the sex success you have in your life? And what are those tools that you've developed within your mindset? Are you a big morning ritual guy? Are you a big, I'm gonna read and, and, and learn and grow my mind? Are you a big meditation guy? Like what are the tools you use to build your mindset for success? I think, you know, for me, the, 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 the hardest one is getting that first success. That's the biggest one. Once you get that first success, then I use, I, I, I understand that I can accomplish success. Mm. And then once you do that, then you can always dip back into that and accomplish success, yeah. no matter how old you are, right? It's like, so once you win that first game, then you know, okay, I can win, right? I won once before, I can win again. And so, you know, I, you know, <laughs> I, yeah, I've had a 15 year career, 18 year career, whatever. You know, I've had years where I'm on fire multiple this, this, hit shows, uh, yeah. whatever. Then you have years that are kind of dry, not much going on, right? I never <clears throat> feel like I can't do it again because I know that I've done it. I know that I've done it at a high level. So I always know I could tap back into it. Yeah. You just got to adjust sometimes. The world will change. And if you're on top for five years, you can't, you know, nobody stays on top consecutively. You got to take cool off periods. hard, no matter who you are. Even right? if you're the rock or... Will Smith or Kevin even, Hart, even, even though it looks like those guys keep growing. Absolutely. But even, even Rihanna hasn't put out an album in a few years. She's acquired so much success with Fenty, right? And, and her clothing line and her skin, right? And then when she puts music back out, she's going to crush them all over again, right? Mm. But it's not like every year it's an album, album, album. Sometimes you got to take a step back away 
and then you got to go into a different direction of success, mm-hmm. right? And so it's uh, it's it's important to go with the ebb and flows mm-hmm. of life. But once you know that you can accomplish success in one arena, then that can be the fuel uh, for you in all <clears throat> other arenas. And what I tell for people going after that first level of success is to just not give up until you get it, right? Yeah. You cannot stop until you get what that goal is. Yeah. And then once you get that, then you got to keep on doing it over and over. <laughs> yeah, so that's exactly. the hard part. Do you think it's easier to become successful or stay successful? It's, I mean, it's harder to become successful or harder to stay? It's harder to, to stay successful. Yeah. I think it's much harder. Why is that? You know, you've seen a lot of people come and go over the last oh 20 my, years of your career. My goodness. Who were massive and then they're probably not around anymore, right? 100%. Too many to name. Um, I think that, you know, it, it's, it's that adjustment, right? When you come out with your first body of work or your first success or your first win, you've prepared your whole life for that moment, right? If you're a 21 year old musician that's dropping your first record, you had 21 years of emotions, experience, <laughs> everything to prepare. And when you do that, you're now giving out your whole bag of tricks on that album, on that song, on that moment. Everything you've ever learned, you've funneled it into that moment of time. And then it's over. Now, a year later, two years later, you got to start from scratch. Mm. And you have this success. So now you're lazy. You got money. You got too many girls around you. You got, you know, family members you got to take care of. You got all these other moving parts. And and you got to balance starting over, right? And doing your next album. So it's it's much harder and, and much easier to get that sophomore jinx mm. than it is to, to, to come out of the gate. You know, that's why a lot of sequels to movies are, are they're not as good, right? You had your whole life to prepare for this one movie. Then the studio wants you to turn it around in two years. It's like, oh, we got to throw this script together. It's trash, right? right. So, <laughs> so, so, yeah, I think it's, it's much harder to keep that level of success, which is why preparation and research and, and just doing the work <clears throat> is so important yeah. you know it's the 10,000 hours from mm-hmm. the outliers it's you know in order to if you win that first championship you're going to win that second if you put in all the work mm-hmm. and and that's what it takes is, is that level of work we've got a few final mm-hmm. questions for you this is fascinating i'm curious if you hypothetical let's say you lost all your money today tomorrow whatever it's all gone all your homes are gone all your assets are gone you've got nothing you're back to like calling up Jay-Z saying, hey, can I crash on your couch or whatever, right? And you had to make, let's hypothetical, you had to make a million dollars in a year. What would you, what would be the first thing you would do? What would you create? What would you launch to be able to create that Ooh. within a year with no money, no assets? You've got your relationships, but you've got none of your uh, business right now. I could do that. What would, it, what would you I do? I could do it. For, first thing you would do. I would do it only fans, just show my body on OnlyFans. <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see. What would be the first thing? I think I would do something consumer based. Mm. I think I would utilize social media. Um, consumer product, you mean? Yeah, to, to come up with a cons- yeah consumer product base. Uh, I think that now. Do I still have my friends and my you relationships? Got all your relationships. You got oh, your Rolodex. So yeah. But what would you do? Yeah, you know, I would. You, you know, I would. I would. I would start a podcast. I <clears> would. <throat> Uh, I would do a podcast where they would have to, you know, they would, now am I still me? Or still you, I, you're oh, you. Oh yeah, okay, so this is not hard. What would you do? So yeah, so I would call you, I would, <laughs> I, we would we would turnkey this and flip the logo around to have a second one. We'd sell this podcast for 500 grand and you, you know, you, you'd you be my partner in it. So you would, you know, you would get uh, 200 grand off of that to, to produce it and get the licensing fees and distribution. I would get 300, we would start the base and then take the 300. I would do, I would take 100,000 of that and I met this really dope young writer from UC, U, USC and I wanna shoot an indie film with it. So I would take 100,000 and do it for the indie film. We would shoot that film in about uh, three weeks and then we would turn that film around. I would sell that film to either Amazon or Netflix That'll sell for 750 grand. So I'd have 750 off of that sale, 300 off of this sale. Then maybe I would do like some kind of quick little product or something. Uh-huh. 
My favorite sneaker cleaner is Jason Marks, but I feel like there there could be like another product in that space. Or I would like put a little shop on Melrose. Like there's not enough vegan mm. food mm. in LA. So that's something I would want to do too. Is like I would want to do like a dope vegan restaurant here in LA. So maybe I would like get a small business loan and do one of those. Either way, I would just start hustling. Every day I wake up and I would just come up with something new and I would like piecemeal it together. Sure, sure. Yeah, I, I would It'd be fine. Yeah. I would do it in six months. Oh, there you yeah, go. Yeah, I'd make the million. Six months. What if you had to make a what ten million in a year? That's that's more complicated. <laughs> okay. That's for another more, podcast. More complicated number. <laughs> what million? We do. <laughs> I, have to, I have to really sit down with David John. You've got a what is bewoke dot vote? What is this? Oh, bewoke vote. Um, Robert Smith, uh, Dion Taylor, who's an incredible, incredible director. Robert Smith is the the black billionaire that is on everyone's list right now, and 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 Roxanne Avon Taylor uh, ha- have forged a, a nonprofit called Be Woke Vote, and I've kind of been helping spearhead some of the initiatives uh, to get people, especially young people, motivated and energized about this year's election. Mm. Um, so yeah, we're doing a big voting be woke vote campaign shoot tomorrow. What are you doing tomorrow? Wow. You come by and take some photos. Where's that? Um, yeah, uh, it's ten minutes away from here. All right, let me know. Throw a hat yeah. on your head. <laughs> You're good to go. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so it's it's literally just about getting people registered and activated and out there voting this year. Yeah. What uh, how can people get involved there? Um, through social media, we can send you product. There's a website that has everything. Uh, but really, it's you know, there's so many different initiatives. It's yeah. really not about our initiative or the next. We use ours for branding and marketing to get our word out. But for me, it's about everybody um, inspiring others to vote. Yeah. So I don't care if you're in North Carolina right now with 100 followers on IG and you work at the grocery store, tell everybody that's coming through you know, at, at, at your local grocery store to go out there and vote. It's just important that all of us exercise that right this yeah, year. Yeah, for sure. Be woke dot vote. Is that where Be you can woke go? Dot vote. Yep. Okay. You're Terrence J. Everywhere, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So make sure you follow Terrence J. You can see every person that he hangs out, every celebrity in the world is pretty much on his Instagram page. I want to acknowledge you before I ask these final two questions for your ability to constantly transform yourself. I think it's really hard to jump into one category, hosting, and then say, you know what? But I want to try acting. I'm really excited about this. I'm passionate about it. I'm going to do it, even when everyone says that I'm not capable. Mm -hmm. You did that. You started doing executive producing. You continue to evolve yourself from what your, future, your your past self wasn't able to do. You keep evolving, growing, and adding value to people's lives through your creativity and your expression. So I really acknowledge you for you. your ability to see a vision, and even if you've never done it, go make it happen for yourself. It's really inspiring, and I think young um, creators or talent or just anyone who want, has a dream can see your example of what you've done and and follow that example. I think it's really cool. Of course, man. Um, This question is called the three truths. So imagine, another hypothetical question, imagine it's your last day on earth many years from now. You're as old as you want to be. You've accomplished every dream. Mm -hmm. You have great relationships. Everything has worked out the way you want it to be. But for whatever reason, every piece of art, creation, video, content, movie uh, that you've ever made, book, all goes with you to the next place and it's your last day on earth. But you get to leave behind three things you know to be true from your entire existence. Three lessons that you would share with the world, and this is all that we would have to remember you by are these three lessons. I call it the three truths. What would you say are your three truths? Uh, Three lessons to the world, you know, don't take life for granted, have fun in all that you do, and never trust a big button to smile. <laughs> That's the greatest. Wait, so number one, <laughs> say it again. <laughs> uh, uh, don't take life for granted. Have fun in all that you do. And never, ever, ever, ever trust a big butt and a smile. I don't think I've ever heard that last one, but that is a great truth because you're probably getting a lot of very, trouble. Very famous uh, quote. Very famous quote. Someone well, said that before? Yeah, yeah. Poison. Come from a song. Okay, poison, okay, poison. okay. Maybe I have heard it, but yeah. 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 You just said it in a great way. Um, <laughs> well, this has been amazing, man. I'm so glad we got to connect. And uh, my final question for you is, what is your definition of greatness? My definition of greatness is 
Dang, that's such a... Mm, mm, mm. My definition of greatness is living a life fulfilled, doing what you do to, to, to make yourself happy and, and living a purpose-driven life you know, with passion, inspiration, and love. And that's mm. a little convoluted, but you can put it, you can work it over. My man, Darren Scare okay. the House. Thanks. Appreciate you, brother. And if you want to learn how to make more money and master money in your life, then check out this video right here. Sure. Because I was bankrupt. See, some people, you haven't pushed non-negotiable yet. You're still optional. I really would love to be successful. And so I you want to be successful. I want to be successful. I want to make money. I want to make money. I want to be healthy. I want to be healthy, yeah, yeah. but it's not non-negotiable yet. Yeah.